Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of The Drive by Gigi, that's me. Today something very special, a Porsche 944 S2 and it's Pete's car. Pete has watched the channel, um, he saw me do a video on this car back in the summer last year when it was at Cridford's and if you want to watch that video there's a link up above now. Um, so sit back, relax and enjoy this video in 4K ultra high definition. Take one. So this is my 944 S2 uh, from its uh, 1990 car. Um, got it originally from Cridford's uh, down in Newhurst, and it was a good blokes, by the way. I agree with that. Uh, hello, Jonathan, if you're watching. And this was a replacement for my original one, which was a Baltic Blue 1989. Uh, 944 which unfortunately got written off and saw this one and uh, made a deal with Jonathan and so I end up with uh, what is an absolutely magnificent car. It is we've had a before filming we've had a quick look round because um, it's one of those cars that you, you don't really want to just do the filming you, you know I've always been a fan of this model and um, yeah I think you know you want to see it what it looks like on your drive enjoy the angles yeah, and the colour, I mean, considering it's 30 years old, the colour yeah. is fantastic. The colour is all, it's a guard's red, um, and it is probably one of the most popular colours that came out for the 944. It's particularly well done on this particular this car, because uh, ultimately it's been very, very well looked after. Uh, the previous owner used it mainly for concourse events, it's won several trophies, uh, none of which I have, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping to enter it for some more concourse events. Oh yeah. Um, so looking at the, in we'll talk about some of the optional extras. Extras. Um, there's actually not that many, but I think one thing that you're going to enjoy is these pinstripe seats. <laughs> so, so some of the optional extras, in Pete, they were. Uh, a lot of the optional extras didn't come on this car. This is absolutely original as it came out of the factory still. Um, but it does have the optional sunroof. There we go. Which is tilt, so it comes up. So tilt sunroof. And you can also take it out and put it into the bag which is in the boot. And yeah. I still have the original bag for that. How, how the hell do they make an electric sunroof that you can pop out? <laughs> I don't know. With and that was old technology. With great difficulty. Um, you have to understand that uh, you, you you need to read the manual I think is the, is the point in certain modes so you turn the key to a certain position and then you open the sunroof and then you open the sunroof again and it releases the uh, the cog and then you can lift it up and just take it out and put it in the back of the boot that's a good job then he's got all the original equipment to do it with absolutely yeah even <laughs> even the bag to put the, the roof in is original which he's got. 100%. Uh, this is one of the uh, most original. I believe the car, talking to the previous owner, the car actually won an award for being the most original 944 in the concourse competition. Wow. And this is a very low example, um, 55,000 miles. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that works out to be on average per year, do you? Not I'm rubbish lot. at math. <laughs> yeah, but it's not not much. It literally was driven to go to the different events, um, and I think from some of the original details I saw, it was in storage for a while. It was in storage yeah. for a while. Yeah. Yeah, but it is absolutely gorgeous. It's immaculate. Um, some of these, you know, even the the badging on the back is perfect. These checkered sort of lights, you know, the writing of the Porsche the logo. It's beautiful, and for some of you who haven't been up close to one of these for a long time, it's got a really cool little spoiler underneath, which um, you sort of forget about, really. Okay. Right, just to show you the boot of this car. Now, to unleash the boot, there is a little button here. Elec electric release, and then come around the back and you can see what these super solid struts German style and it's quite a big boot yep uh, in the previous one my wife and I have been away on several trips uh, especially to France 
and we can fit a, easily fit a week's worth of uh, luggage in there. Yeah, can you get a suitcase in there? It too, easily. Very really? Easy. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it surprised me. I thought that the angle uh, of the sort of the slope would be more than it is, but it's actually a really good sort of solid size. The other thing is that uh, this obviously is a, a sunshade, and if you look at the if you look at the wind, uh, window at the back here, you can see that it's uh, curved, and ultimately that gives you even more boot space. That's true. Yeah, good design. It's, it's a very good design. Yeah. This, I mean, this is a GT. It's a Grand Tour, and that's yeah. what it was meant for. And then, uh, as you can see in the boot, Graham, we've got the original compressor, which blows oh. up the spare tire. Wow! Look at this. These are incredibly rare, and very rarely do they come with the car. And the original toolkit, oh. which I don't think has ever been used. Oh, I'm starting to dribble. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. A bit of rust on there. Oh. Uh, and again, as I say, these very rarely come with the original stuff. I have the cover here, which is for the sunroof. Wow, like this. And you take the sunroof out, put it into the cover, and then you can strap it down in the boot of the car. Huh. We won't be doing that today because the weather in England is crap. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's not as bad as it was about an hour ago. That's true. We were supposed to film this yesterday and it's glorious sunshine, but we had other commitments that so couldn't happen. And of course, the one day that we want to film this glorious car, it pisses down. <laughs> so there we go. But oh, well, that's pretty cool. Um, anything else which is very rare? Not um, really. Uh, the the only other thing oh, yeah. I can show you is the, the space that all of that little lot fits into. You oh, can yeah, see this down is, there. Yeah, this is really cool. We were talking about this earlier. This is storage area. It doesn't really do it justice on video, but trust me, you could probably get a mini keg in, yes. in there. Quite easily. Yeah, which maybe that's why the Germans <laughs> uh, built big arches. Who knows? The other thing to mention, I don't know whether or not you have an audience out in America. We do. Is it? Ah, promotion time. Thanks to all you Americans, you're my biggest view in population. So, well done, Pete. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> One thing on the European cars, which I don't believe is the same on the American 944s, is that over here we have the battery. Oh. And I believe on the US version, you've got another storage uh, compartment there that you could fit another keg in. <laughs> On the American version, the battery, I believe, is on what we have over here as obviously the right, oh, right drive. Right. And the battery goes into the bonnet uh, just in front of the driver. Ah, all right. Uh, while we're just uh, looking at original features, something this car does have, which uh, some of you might care about and might not care about, is this car comes with the original uh, unleaded fuel only sticker. That's still on there. Um, and this is quite amusing if I can open it. It even comes with the original cassette holder for tapes. Those of you that don't know what a tape is, you need to go onto Google and take a look. But yeah, they're these square things that used to hold about 90 minutes of music. Uh, got a nice little airplane style smoking ashtray, um, five speed manual gearbox. And we'll go through the buttons in a minute and yeah, we'll take you through the interior in a bit more detail. Okay, here we are inside of the 944 S2. Pete's going to show you what some of these buttons do. Um, so down here, then in the centre console, this first one on the left. That's the central locking. Oh, well, this, this particular one is my garage door opener. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't come with the car. Yeah. This one locks and unlocks all the doors. Then we've got a selector switch for the mirrors left and right, which you then command with a, a toggle switch on the door, on the driver's side door. Which is here. That's right. And then we've got the rear windscreen wiper. Is that a standard option? Yes. Yeah, okay. And then we've got the button that raises uh, the sunroof. Uh, which is a fairly complicated process when you want to take it out. Oh. <laughs> you have to have the key in certain positions to uh, take it out and to raise and lower it. Um, and it is a RTFM time. <laughs> well done, Germany. Uh, and then we've got the headlight leveler there uh, if you've got a load in the back. 
Oh, cool. And this is the original stereo? This is the original Panasonic stereo that came wow. with it. I thought that they supplied Blaupunt, but looking at the original specification, they do in fact supply the Panasonic. The good thing about this is that they had the foresight to put a, a connector in there for what they call CD, but it's great because I can now plug in my um, iPhone to it and listen to the football. Very good foresight. Well done. Well done, Porsche. Um, stick shift, five, five speed. Yep. What's the ratios like? Very good. Uh, first will take you up to about 30 miles an hour. Second to just under 60. Third, just over 80. And then about 120 in fourth. And then in fifth, you take it up to the red line which as i said previously is about 149 miles an hour i don't know why porsche have made all their new cars with such long gearing um these what pete's just described makes way more sense i think for for normal driving um i don't know what difference the six speed would make in the in the 968 yeah i don't know i haven't driven one yeah but i would imagine that it's uh uh they've shortened the gears and put the ratios in between because I don't believe the 968 I think it's 155 it's not that much faster uh, right. than the I should I should point out the 968 will hopefully be coming in a few weeks time so stay tuned for that video um, so yeah and then we've got this funny um, button uh, here if you push it resets the tripometer there you go here we go oh. Except not in this one. Oh, the ignition has to be on. <laughs> no. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> I think we might just have found another fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the one thing that I would point out is that, uh, and I think somebody might have already done it, that's the first time I've pushed the button in this car. <laughs> um, the cogs are very brittle and you don't press the button when you're moving in the car because it breaks up all the cogs. Oh and it's very fiddly to replace so i think we may have just found that somebody might have pressed the button <laughs> <laughs> there's always one um and then over here we've got these very cool um funny little uh, vents here and then you've got these other ones here uh, we've got the front and rear fog lights good old turnkey which don't get that any anymore in porsche which is a shame um washers indicators um and main beam is that right yeah so the, oh yeah the big typical porsche here we go knob which is straight out of a 911 and that is what operates the flip up headlights all right okay then let's give it a go then oh the, um, go on and pete give it a turn it stays this way oh we've got the football on yeah here we go oh here we go that's the view with the headlights up and now they're down. <laughs> so cool, so retro. And then the fantastically clear Porsche instrument dials. Classic, really, really nice. Goes up to 160 miles per hour. Um, 55,000 miles, very low. Petrol gauge, uh, what we got, battery oil level is it that's the oil pressure oil pressure what's that one Tem on the left temperature engine temperature engine temperature engine temperature um yeah and then here we go we've got the old air okay then looking at these door cards the inside trim continues you've got the pinstripes in here it's lovely and soft as well um, and then you've got these massive massive speaker units here oh, i'll tell you i'd be tempted to put some nice modern speakers in there and then you've got these little speaker units here with your tweeters, I should think. And there's speakers in the back um, that match. Here we go. Just about to see them. And there's the rear of the 944 for one, a very happy owner. That's the rear heated, uh, heated rear window. Heated rear window. Yeah. And then recirculating fan. Um, oh, look at this, look. Original clock working working and not yeah. misted yeah there we go that is the inside of a 944 s2 um and obviously these fantastic velour isn't it 
Is it velour or just I a... I no idea. It could be velour. It feels like velour. Not that I own a lot of velour. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to touch. And, and we were discussing before we shot the video um, <clears throat> that actually it probably holds you in place better. It's more comfortable. Um, yeah, it does feel a lot more comfortable than uh, my original one, which had leather seats in it which tended to be a little bit hard and I think as you pointed out earlier on Graham you tend to stick to them in the summer yeah. and get freezing cold in the winter yeah so we prefer the fabric ones but if you want leather go and put yourself some leather seats in right okay for those of you that are a bit geeky like me this is the Porsche 944 fuel cap with all the different bits of information on and they're so thoughtful that they even come with a bit of fabric to cover up the the fuel cap and it says oil okay nice nice reminder and it's got a key that you need to use to unlock it um do you do you have to always put the key in yes you do okay uh, well you can actually leave the key out but um you don't because ultimately you don't want people nicking the fuel out your car no yeah <laughs> not that people do that in england but you never know there's probably a few people that will one thing I should say about the, the fuel tank, it's about an 80 litre capacity and in the UK at the moment unleaded I think is around 165, 170 um, so you're probably talking about 130 quid to fill it up. Um, well Graham. Oh, am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> because of the new regulations on the fuel, uh, we've now got E5 and E10 over here. Oh. And this particular car doesn't like the E5 fuel, which is the normal unleaded. So I've had to put, uh, no, uh, E5 in it, not E10. E10's the one that it doesn't like. So this one's got E5 and I've just paid £1.85 a litre. Ooh, that's worse than diesel. Diesel's 180, by the way. Um, ouch. So to fill it up completely? I haven't done that yet. <laughs> oh well it's um you, you're probably not how many miles would you say you, you're doing in this a week you're probably what not weekend up, use probably 20 30. oh blimey yeah, so nothing a fuel a, a tank of fuel is going to last you it's going to last a long a time a couple of months maybe my previous one we took on a rally down through europe uh, in 2006 and we were averaging around about 420 miles to a tank of fuel. Uh, pretty until, good. Until we took it on the autobahn. Oh. And I've got a picture of the rev counter bouncing off the rev limiter in <laughs> fifth gear on the autobahn at 160 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, <God>. Now, <clears throat> according to the manual, the car only does 149. So how accurate that is reading is I don't know. But what I do know is that uh, we quickly ran out of fuel and it did about 180 miles to a tank. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. It's a bit thirsty, but you know, if that's what you bought this car for, going down the other bun, it's going to drink the fuel, isn't it? It certainly does. It's more efficient than a Bugatti Veyron, that's for sure. Right, let's have a look under the bonnet then, Pete. So... Here we have the Slump 4 3 litre unit, which I believe came out of a 928. They originally used half the V8 engine of a 928 when they produced this unit. This one produces 211 horsepower. But it's a super light car, isn't it? It's only it's about very 30, light. 1300 kilos. 1300 kilos, yeah. So it's not, it doesn't sound as bad as it is. So you don't really need that much more. Everything you can see in here is original. So tidy, look at it. You could eat your food off here if you really wanted. Is that the old chassis number? Yep. Look at that. Super, super tidy. And that, that is where our American cousins will find their battery, I believe. Ah. In this location here. Ah, well we is, we've got it tucked away in the boot, out the way. Uh, it's it's super special, isn't it? I hope I hope you're enjoying this video. Some of you might find it a bit more, a bit too detailed, but for those of you that have stuck around, thanks for doing so. Please remember to subscribe. Uh, leave any comments you want, myself or Pete. We'll come back with some answers. Um, Original indicator lens, orange, 
and then you've got your foggies down here, they're white. Apparently they're very hard to come by these days. Um, and then for you guys in America, oh actually Pete, are these the water jets to yep. clean the lights? Yeah. Cool. You can, uh, you can clean the headlights, but obviously only when they're up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then in the, if you're in America, your indicators would be, they'd have some on the side. Side repeaters uh, at the front there, whereas we only have the one side repeater, very small on the uh, wing there. There we go. And then in America again, they would have a rear side repeater just in front of the bumper. Cool. And uh, if you also look at the European car, the we don't have the... Uh, the, the, the extended bumpers or fenders oh, yeah. or whatever they call them in yeah, America, yeah. Uh, which I think, to be quite honest, ruin the look of the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We love you, America, but we prefer the way that the UK car looks for sure. All right, let's take it out. Go for it. inside the 944 S2 um, five-speed manual lovely short throw gearbox and here we are one of the things we were talking about earlier is just how narrow this dashboard is and um, very rare on a 944 to find a dash that isn't cracked um, this one's absolutely perfect. Um, all the dials are still clear. Um, everything works. It's a real, real beaut. And and just from sort of being in here for sort of ten minutes, we've been driving around just talking because um, you want to enjoy the experience as well. I know. As I want to show you this video, but um, it's amazingly fast. I, I wasn't sure whether I'd be disappointed, but it's actually quicker than I thought. And and you, it's true, you do actually feel like you are sitting in the middle of the car, really low, um, and you feel the entire engine rev range through your body. Uh, it's a really raw experience, and I think it's lost in the modern cars. Um, and this today, you know, 30 years old, it still feels really good. And if you're thinking about buying an old Porsche, um, you really shouldn't be put off, honestly. Get behind the wheel of one, um, and I think you'll be quite amazingly surprised at how smooth and comfortable they are um, you know and they're actually nothing really rattles too much it's all very solid and uh, yeah it's a, it's a great experience so yeah, don't be put off okay this one's for my wife because she's normally always the passenger um, I can confirm Paula <laughs> there is plenty of leg room for you <laughs> in the well so you can stretch your long legs out um, it's always quite important actually. I've sat in a few Porsches over the last sort of 12 months and there's quite a lot of uh, ingress into the passenger footwells which is quite annoying especially if you're going to do long distance but this there's none of that in here. It's all a massive flat area, loads of room to put your feet. Um, yeah, there we go, very important. What's your favourite thing about this S2? Uh, there's a million and one things I love about the car. Top three. Top three. The way that it turns into a corner and comes out of a corner at speed, you get very little understeer and you 
only get oversteer when you want to. Uh, <laughs> if you if you push it too hard, then obviously the thing's going to come round. But even if it does come round, you know exactly how far it's going to come round, <laughs> aren't you? Uh, the other thing is that we were talking earlier on about the gear ratios. The fact that I can drive around in second or third gear most of the time means it's quite relaxing, quite nice, unless I really want to push it, and then it'll go through the ratios very uh, easily. And the gearbox, as you can see, the gearbox goes in and out of gear. It's, it's silky smooth. Yeah. And then I think that the other thing is, apart from the looks of the car, which are, which are fantastic anyway, um, but it, the way that it accelerates, the way that it delivers everything, the way that you've got everything on tap, Porsche really seem to have got the car completely right, in my own opinion. Let's see if I can get this beat in particular. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're, no. oh, go wherever, go, go wherever you want, please. Your car. We've just uh, been out for a drive, stopped off to have a quick smoke, and uh, we're just talking about numbers. Um, tax for one of these cars is quite expensive. Was it 400? I think it's 420 a year, yeah. 420 a year, um, but I, when it gets to about 40 years old, the tax, this should get classic car status, and it should be zero, we hope. Um, insurance, uh, probably, it depends on how old you are. They don't because it's a classic car insurance policy. They don't give you any no claims discount. Right. And uh, I think this one's about 280 a year, and that's for me and my wife to drive 5,000 miles a year in it. 
so it's not too bad pretty good yeah pretty good and that's on an agreed valuation as well uh, through footman james oh yeah heard of them heard of them they're not a sponsor of this channel but <laughs> good company um yeah so there we go they're the numbers um we're going to get some other footage now